Hey folks, we're perusing point and clicks today since I got a review copy of Morian Studios' Conquistadorio, a puzzler with an altogether surreal story and setting. Still, the question must be asked, did this title broach new grounds or did this conquest see me quitting? I'm your host Arlian. Let's find out together. All the Conquistador had wanted was to be able to rest in peace, something which was foiled by the altogether invasive efforts of an oversized pill bug. With very little warning, he was plucked from his resting place, only for it to be rudely shattered into pieces. Also, his resting place is a coffin, the Conquistador is some sort of zombie, and the pill bug is some sort of alien invader thing. I told you, this was going to be a surreal experience. In any case, so begins his quest to find a new casket to get cozy in. Well, that and to reclaim his prized flag piece since the poor guy also manages to get mugged within the first few minutes of the game. I honestly don't know what more there is to say about the story on a narrative front since it generally plays out as a weird fever dream which is only further emphasized by the fact that the world he lives in is some weird mishmash of necropolis with bits of broken down sci-fi elements. Still, I can at least talk about the way it's executed and this is definitely a case of show don't tell. Rather literally since the crux of what you'll discover is a matter of what you see and the weird pantomimed speech moments that crop up when you find another critter to engage with. Speech bubbles, I should note, that frequently wound up being repetitive and thus left me furiously trying to skip them, only to discover not only that I couldn't, but that the next NPC I came across was basically going to do the exact same sequence again. It's definitely something, though perhaps the weirdest element of all is just how abruptly Conquistadorio ends. Without Without getting into spoilers, it just stops. There, there's no real payoff. It doesn't even feel like a cliffhanger really, and more like the experience wasn't actually finished. Something which is given some credence by the gameplay. So let's tackle those mechanics, shall we? On the whole, this is a fairly cut and dry point and click adventure with you clicking to move, find objects to interact with, and add to your inventory. Admittedly, it can sometimes be a bit tricky to discern what you can interact with in the environment but the game is kind enough to provide a button that highlights what you can click on. Weirdly, this isn't a toggle, but rather a small glowing point that you have to click on repeatedly to cycle through every specific point you can interact with, which is then made even weirder due to another element. Specifically, while there are certain objects you can click on and fiddle with, which even have their own particular puzzles and side areas, they don't exactly lead anywhere. You can gain access to a locked door only for it to never come up again. You can clear the way to a misty path only to not be able to do anything with it. You can fiddle with a machine only for it to actually never be a part of any puzzle, which all lends a bit more weight to the idea that this particular entry in the game has been snipped in half. That also includes picking up items that are useless for now. But what about the puzzles you do get to interact with? While some of Conquistadorial's puzzles are interesting, others have some extremely obtuse solutions. Lords know I was stuck on one for ages because despite clicking on an object and interacting with it repeatedly, I failed to advance the puzzle due to failing to click on the right spot, which was annoying because it's not like I had any real reason to do so, nor was its ensuing use all that sensical. Really, a bunch of the puzzles have solutions which are absolutely weird short of brute force trial an error and a bit of luck, which has me fairly grateful that there was a hint system. A very annoying hint system. See, whenever you want to try and find out what you need to do next in a given area, you need to play a small shoot 'em up minigame. Specifically, the exact same minigame in the exact same stage every time. While it was charming the first time around, having to go through the identical process for any hint you want, especially since you have to restart from scratch since you die in one hit, just winds up feeling like padding. Or a middle finger from the developers, I legitimately don't, I still don't know which one it is, I don't get why this is a thing. Also as a side note, just use the arrow keys rather than clicking on the arrows in the UI, just trust me on this. Either way, that's all I have to say about the mechanics, so let's talk visuals and I do have to give Conquistadorio credit here. It's a very pretty game. The actual environments are gorgeous and wandering through the bleak necropolis was probably the highlight of my experience. It's also very 
fairly fond of our little undead protagonist and the animations for all the other deathly denizens you encounter. Sound-wise, I have substantially less to say. Much of what you'll hear is a combination of ambient noise and light music which does help to build a mood, but which ultimately became background noise as I fumbled around cursing my existence. And if that line didn't hint at my overall feelings, let me be abundantly clear. While I can certainly appreciate what Conquistadorio provided insofar as its ambience and the world it was trying to build, my overall experience could be summed up as frustrating, annoying, and monotonous. There was just so much that galled me from start to finish. For instance, meandering aimlessly from one end of the map to the other to figure out the right way to click on items in a series of puzzles which felt more like guesswork than quest work. I kept waiting for the experience to pick up, for things to get better, even as I found myself getting increasingly annoyed, and then for it to abruptly end. It felt like a slap. Ultimately, with how the experience played out, I can't even recommend this one, which is why I'm rating it a fail. Despite how much love was clearly put into building its world, the actual experience of playing it was far from enjoyable for me, and the fact that it feels like an unfinished product being released as a full game was the final nail in its coffin. Anywho, thanks for tuning in. If you have something to say to me, feel free to leave a comment, and if you enjoy my efforts to create new indie reviews and interviews, hit the subscribe button and the bell. There's also a link to my Discord in the comments below, the Crit Hit Cauldron. You can also find a link to my Patreon there if you want to see reviews early or just help support the channel so I can get more videos out. There's also a link to my merch house if you want neat swag like Crit Hit coffee mugs or the Crit Hit shirt. And a big thank you to our Crit Hit crew with Green Witch Babby and Andy Noted. Thank you again for being lovely patrons. That said, I'll catch you folks on the next episode of Crit Hit. Take care till then.